One billion dollars worth of white powder. That's how much the Australian government seized from the Sinaloa cartel in March 2023. 2015, this time it was the Jalisco cartel's turn as the Mexican government seized $1.1 billion. However, the government quickly discovered that getting rid of these drugs was more difficult than confiscating them. But the cartels raking in tens of billions of dollars per year kept going as if nothing ever happened. So, what are the 10 richest criminal organizations in the world? Number 10. The Russian Mafia Helping to expose the magnitude of the Russian Mafia. Diamond and arms dealing, cigarette smuggling, healthcare and credit card fraud. February 19, 2018. 18 members of the Russian Mafia were indicted for laundering a whopping $62 million through one of Russia's biggest insurance companies, Roskostraki. But that money is a mere drop of water in the pool of wealth these guys control. The Russian Mafia has been around since the 80s, controlling everything from drug and human trafficking to extortion and robbery. And obviously, almost every criminal empire out there is involved in these acts. But one thing that streamlines so much money and power into the hands of the Russian Mafia is their involvement in the uranium black market. Let me explain. September 2nd, 1945 was the day World War II officially ended. But it was also the day the Soviet Union conceived plans to extend its reach into Europe and collect as much uranium from places like Czechoslovakia. They needed this uranium for their Soviet nuclear program. But after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the Russian Mafia exploited the nuclear program and began dealing with uranium, skyrocketing their annual revenue to about $8.6 billion. And with that amount of money, the Russian Mafia has established itself as a criminal conglomerate, with 6,000 different groups operating under it, and 250,000 members across more than 50 countries. They operate any and everywhere. But they're a major problem for the United States. Do you know why? Well, because the United States doesn't have an extradition treaty with Russia. So this creates a problem when Russian criminals are captured in the United States. One such criminal that has so blatantly navigated this loophole is the boss of all bosses under the Russian Mafia, Semyon Mogilevich. Mogilevich has been under the radar of the US for at least 20 years now, and in 2009 he made the FBI's list of top 10 most wanted fugitives around the world. Mogilevich has been involved in many crimes, including defrauding investors of his company, YBM Magnex International, reaping off $150 million worth of their investment. And then when he was finally caught in 2008, he was released on bail because the US had no right to hold on to him. Now, I obviously don't know all the legal proceedings that followed this, but the bottom line is, the Russian Mafia is a powerhouse in the underground crime world, and there's no sign of them slowing down on their dealings. Number 9. Gulf Cartel No other criminal organization has dealt with as many anti-drug agencies and rival cartels as these guys. Yet, they've still managed to survive to this day. And the best part is, their organization is still worth a whopping $9.9 .9 billion. But how did they amass that level of wealth? Well, for one, the Gulf Cartel has its hand in everything, from drug trafficking to arms dealing. But its major source of funding is through the shipment of cocaine into the U.S. through the Mexican-U.S. border. They began operation in the 1930s and were among the very first cartels in Mexico. But went to war with a fraction of their cartel, Los Zetas, in the 90s. Los Zetas eventually split from the Gulf Cartel, sending their organization into a downward spiral. But even though they were losing men almost every day, they were still a top crime syndicate until something tragic happened in 1999. November 9th, former leader of the Gulf Cartel, Gardenas Guillen, and about 15 of his Sicarios held two federal officers at gunpoint in the city of Matamoros, Mexico. One was an FBI agent, and the other, DEA. These agents acted as informants to gather as much intel as they could on the operations of the cartel. However, Cárdenas found out about it and nabbed them in their car as they cruised the streets of Matamoros. Now, let me just tell you this right now. This was and probably still is one of the craziest standoffs between federal agents and narcos in Mexico. Cárdenas held these people at gunpoint, but somehow these agents managed to convince him that killing them would make the U.S. government come after the Gulf Cartel with everything they've got. 
He thought about it and let these federal agents go, warning him never to return to his home turf again. We're not sure if that was actually the right call from Cardenas. But what we do know is that letting those men go triggered a massive manhunt by the US government on the Gulf Cartel. Cardenas also became an internationally wanted criminal with a $2 million bounty on his head. And from there, the story just goes haywire. But anyway, they still make decent money, earning them their spot on our list. Number 8. Solzevskaya Bratva Remember I just said there are about 6,000 different crime syndicates under the Russian Mafia? Well, the biggest, and in fact richest of those crime syndicates, is Solzevskaya Bratva. They've had their hands in every single pie of crime. Extortion, drug trafficking, arms dealing, credit card fraud, and so many others. They receive an estimated annual income of about $8.5 billion. But what's really important isn't where they are now, but rather, where it all started. They began with a man named Sergei Mikhailov. Sergei was a regular waiter who ended up behind bars on charges of fraud. A few years after his release, he recruited a bunch of unemployed ex-convicts like himself, forming the organization in the late 1980s. And just like the larger Russian mafia, Solzhevskaya Bratva also exploited the chaos that came with the fall of the Soviet Union to align themselves with Russian politicians, the government, banks to launder their money, and even airports. Today, Solzhevskaya Bratva controls parts of the narcotics underworld in Russia, Central Europe, and of course, the United States. Number 7. Camorra The Italian mafia-like criminal organization is one of the oldest in the world, dating back as far as the 17th century. They've had their hands in everything crime. But unlike other cartels, the Camorra took things to a whole new level. November 2013, about 10,000 Italians gathered in Naples to protest over the Camorra's dumping of waste in the countryside. And yes, that sounds confusing, but in a moment, it'll all make sense. Since the 80s, the Camorra have been in control of waste disposal around the area of Campania, Italy. And due to their negligence, the landfills around the area got filled to capacity in December 1999. Now, the reason why Camorra was in charge of waste disposal was because, at the time, it was a very lucrative business. And besides, they probably needed legit companies to launder their money, so that might have been an extra factor. But when those landfills got to capacity, the Camorra decided to use alternative ways of disposing this waste. They began by using unfriendly chemicals to get rid of them, and on some occasions they just burned them roadside, leading to massive air and soil pollution in the area. Doing this every day, every month, and every year escalated things beyond a point even the Camorra could control. Now, there are millions of tons of industrial waste dumped everywhere around the city, and cancer caused by pollution has gone up from 40 to 47 percent. The people of Campania are dying each day from this, but on the other hand, the Camorra rake in a whopping $4.9 billion from not just their waste disposal companies, but from every criminal activity they're involved in. Actually, the real figure is $33 billion. But when the money is divided across the different fractions of the Italian Mafia, the Camorra is given the lion's share. And when it comes to drugs, they have branches in many countries around the world, including France, Peru, Morocco, Netherlands, the UK, the United States, and most recently, Nigeria. There have been efforts by different anti-criminal organizations around the world to clamp down on these guys. And while many have been successful, this organization just keeps growing stronger. The families of past members now see it as a legacy to initiate their children and grandchildren into the Kamoda organization. Number 6. Yamaguchi Gumi 1946, when a man named Kazuo Taoka started the third generation of the Yamaguchi Gumi organization, it was just a small group of families. But under his rule, Taoka grew this small group into one of Japan's biggest sub-criminal organizations under the Yakuza. Don't worry, I'll explain that in a moment. But the point is, Taoka was so brilliant in his operations, he made sure that every dollar or yen that came in illegally was washed through the multiple legit companies he and his organization controlled. And in three decades, Taoka grew the Yamaguchi Gumi into a criminal empire that received about $6.6 billion in profit annually. 
But unlike other organizations, the Yamaguchi Gumi diversified its operations into stock exchange manipulation and the illegal distribution of pornography. And to put into context just how structured this organization is, they've actually been involved in helping certain parts of Japan. Take for instance the Kobe earthquake that happened in 1995. The Yamaguchi Gumi started a large-scale relief effort to help the victims. And then in the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, they did the same. But at the end of the day, their organization has been on a steady decline over the years. And as of now, we don't see them as vicious as they were before. But their companies are still running and the cash is still coming in. Number 5. Yakuza. Oh boy, I don't even know where to begin with these guys. But maybe the best part to start with is the fact that they are by far one of the largest and richest criminal organizations in the world. I'm talking about collecting a $13 billion profit annually. And I think those numbers are actually way off. But anyway, you've probably seen them around with their full body tattoos. These tattoos are done as a ritual to be part of the organization. And although their peak period of operation was in the 80s and 90s, they're still as much a threat as they've always been. And just like their subordinate organization, Yamaguchi Gumi, they love carrying out criminal activities in the corporate world. For example, in 1989, one of the heads of the Yakuza, Susumi Ishii, bought $225 million worth of stock from Tokyo Kyuko Electric Railway. And that's just one of the many legitimate companies they own. So in reality, they aren't criminals like the others on this list, because half the things they do are done in the open. But at the same time, they always play dirty through manipulation, blackmail, or any other way they deem necessary to get what they want. And it's not exclusive to people outside their organization. No, because if you screw up as a member of the Yakuza, you'll have to do the Yabitsume ritual, which is to cut off your finger and give it to your superior. Yeah, no wonder why these guys are so consistent in their field. Number 4. Ndrangheta. 80% of the cocaine smuggled into Europe goes through the Calabrian port of Gioiataro. This port is controlled by a criminal organization known as Drangheta. This organization sprung out of Italy in the 18th century. Since then, they have managed to clench their fists into every continent, carrying out every single crime you can imagine. The major reason why they're on this list is that in 2013, these guys raked in a whopping $58 billion. And in 2010, they made billions that accounted for 3% of Italy's GDP. But the largest part of that money came from their operations in, you know where? That's right, the United States. They found their way back to the US in the 90s and settled in the city of Pennsylvania. From there, they began drug trafficking, arms dealing, and pretty much every bad thing the U.S. is facing today and always has been. But you can trust the U.S. to always fight back, right? Anyways. 2014, the U.S. pulled off a successful tag team crackdown on Drangheta operations in the U.S. and Italy. It was like a dream WWE match, but fought with guns and ammunition. The FBI and Italian police targeted the Gambino and Bonanno families in the U.S. While in Italy, the Italian police went after the Ursino family in Gioiosa Ionica. The raid took effect simultaneously and was successful despite it occurring in different locations. And using the same tactics of fighting the Drangheta in every country they operate, this criminal organization has lost over $20 billion worth of assets to different anti-drug agencies and governments. But that sum is pretty small to the amount of wealth they've gathered over the decades. Number 3. Sinaloa Cartel. $3 billion. That's how much they say these guys rake in from cocaine distribution annually, which seems low given the market's value is estimated between $6.5 billion to $500 billion. And since the cartel's responsible for 60% of worldwide cocaine distribution, their actual earnings are definitely much higher. But anyways, this cartel is the largest international crime syndicate in Mexico. It was started by a man named Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. But hey, if you're a fan of Crime Dynasty, this man needs no introduction. And if you're not a fan, then I suggest you have a look at the numerous videos on his life and how he's managed to lead this cartel to a global crime empire. Guzman has also masterminded two rather amazing prison escapes. And although he's locked up in ADX Florence, the most secure prison in America, 
I think you'd find it interesting just how this cartel still brings in billions of dollars annually. The major source of their income is through illegal distribution of cocaine. Cocaine is prepared and shipped from Colombia to Guatemala. Then the shipments are smuggled through the north of Mexico into places like Arizona, California, Illinois, Texas, New York City, and Washington State. They also distribute other hard drugs like opioids, marijuana, methamphetamine, and America's deadliest epidemic right now, fentanyl. And despite the capture of El Chapo and his son, Ovidio Guzman, the Sinaloa cartel still operates like nothing ever happened. They're structured so well that no matter who's in charge, the show must go on. Number 2. The Medellin Cartel If they still existed, the Medellin Cartel would have been at the top of our list for being the richest criminal organization in the world. And as I'm sure you know, the Medellin Cartel started with Pablo Escobar in the 1970s. Escobar was shipping out 300 kilos of cocaine into the US through Miami, and I mean 300 kilos per day. By 1982, cocaine has surpassed coffee as the major export out of Colombia. And to think that it was even illegal just adds an extra twist to the story. In his prime, Escobar and the Medellin cartel were responsible for 80% of the cocaine in the US. And for about seven consecutive years, Pablo Escobar made Forbes list of the top 10 richest men in the world. One time it was said that he was estimated at $37 billion. But if he made that amount of money for himself, how much did the whole cartel rake in annually? Well, it might interest you to know that the Medellin cartel made at least $188 million every day. Now, if you do the math and calculate how much they made in a year, and then for decades that they operated, you might come to realize that the numbers run beyond what you'd imagine. And with that kind of money floating around, who wouldn't want a piece of that pie? And they went for it even the seemingly incorruptible CIA. Although the US was in part responsible for the death of Pablo Escobar and the fall of the Medellin cartel, they were also involved in helping the cartel smuggle cocaine into their country. The CIA allegedly helped the Medellin cartel and used the funds gotten to fight their war against the Sandinista government at the time. Now, these might just be rumors. But at the end of the day, the Medellin cartel was and will always be remembered as one of the richest criminal organizations in the world. And number one, Triad. For every criminal organization mentioned in this video so far, we could break down how much they made and how we think they made it. But when it comes to these guys, that's not even possible. The Triad is by far the richest criminal organization in the world. And you most probably haven't heard of them because, well, they have so much money they keep themselves out of the media. This criminal organization is one of the several criminal organizations that operate out of China. They're everywhere, and I mean everywhere. They also don't really get involved in drug trafficking. Rather, they like manipulating big companies, making them bend to their will. Another thing making them stand out is the fact that they're a decentralized group. This means you can't pinpoint who the boss is and who isn't. They all operate the same, do the same, and blend properly with the crowd. Now, if I was to push myself to the limit and try to break down how much these guys make a year, you'd be shocked. It's said they traffic at least 100,000 people every year into Europe and the US, and the revenue gotten from this alone runs up to $3.5 billion annually. But apart from that, they actually do have their hands in the narcotics underworld, and their involvement in distributing drugs around Asia earns them an additional $200 billion. It's almost triple El Salvador's GDP in 2022. And these numbers don't include the profit gotten from their money laundering companies and exploitations in Africa. So, could these figures be exaggerated? Or is the triad the closest we've ever seen to a trillion dollar criminal organization?